Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 NATO project. And it is a very big day for Mr. Well, it happened last week, but I'm getting around to it. The PlayStation 1 core has gone public and PlayStation 1 is here on Mr. That console above and that FPGA board below are one and the same. That is absolutely spectacular. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well, and maybe Wampa Fruit is one of the bonuses you get, who knows. But the core is public, that means that it is basically done. Now there might be a glitch here and there that will still get ironed out, but for the most part, this is a PlayStation 1 in FPGA and it is absolutely spectacular. Now you do need to do a few things to get the core loaded up onto your system, but they are quite easy because this is a setup guide, I'm gonna walk you through it. You're gonna wanna go over to scripts and you're gonna wanna use update all. And you can configure this however you want, but just follow along, hold the up button on your controller, and you're gonna pop into the update all settings. Obviously we want main distribution enabled. I'm gonna turn a few things off here to save some time. You can either turn them on or off, whatever you want. It has nothing to do with this tutorial. But what we need to make sure is that BIOS Gitter is enabled, because this is gonna pull down all three BIOS files for the different regions of PlayStation 1. And make sure you're using the new downloader. I don't know how old your version of update all is. Make sure it's up Updated and make sure use new downloader is selected under that miscellaneous options item. From there, all you need to do is go and exit and run update all, and it is gonna update your mister. It's gonna grab that new PlayStation 1 core. It takes like three, four minutes. It's not that long at all, unless you're downloading everything, including the main ROMs. But you'll see here, it's gonna pull the ROMs or BIOS files for the PlayStation, and it's gonna pop them right where you need them to be. And with any luck, trust me, it is very easy. Go back into your core menu, and you're gonna see PSX right there. Ignore the unstables, those are beta versions that I was testing and doing videos on. But once you get to that core, you're gonna be playing PlayStation 1 on your Mr. FPGA, and it is absolutely spectacular. Well, it'll be spectacular if you actually put games on it, that is. All you need to do is either find the files in a binq format or a chd format. Under the PSX folder, put each individual game in its own folder. You can categorize them, but just make sure that each binq is in a folder or the chd, and make sure they're under the PSX folder. That'll be created when you use update all. And that is as simple as it is to add games to your Mr. FPGA to play PlayStation 1. Copy the binq or the chd into a folder, and you're good to go. There are a few things we need to do before we start playing, and there's a few different options I want to go over with you guys. But the first thing that you want to do is make sure you configure your controller. If you do not do that, nothing is going to work. So just go over to Define PSX Buttons and map your controller however you want to set it up. There's pretty much a standard way to do it. If you can want to do it differently, that's up to you. But just map all of your buttons. If you find that there's anything that you don't want to map, like you don't want save states, you can just hit the user button on your I.O. board and it'll skip get past those completely, but once you get to the end of this menu, it's going to ask if you want to do an alternative setup. I just say no and you're good to go. This does have vibration support, and in Pad 1 and Pad 2, you can configure different controllers, including GunCon. I'll go over that in a little bit, but I just leave it on DualShock. It's going to give you the analog support, and it's also going to give you the vibration function, which is absolutely spectacular. I'm so glad it's here, and you're going to see this DS Mode option menu right here. There's different configurations on how to turn that on and off. You can cycle through them. It's usually a three-button command. I like L3, R3, and up, down. That seems to be the best to me. And now, even though you can't feel a video, this is vibrating on my controller, and it works absolutely perfectly. You can use a DualShock 4, you can use a DualShock 5. I was using a Switch Pro controller for this, just for the time being, as it was next to me. And the vibration felt absolutely spectacular. So make sure if you got a vibrating controller, you do enable that. And this is just so amazing because this core just doesn't act like a PlayStation 1. It gives you options that original hardware would never allow you to do. In some games, it makes them feel almost brand new. Something like Silent Hill here, you'll see that we have the dithering off. We have that rainbow banding. You get to decide what looks good to you. But if you go into video and audio mode, you can turn dithering on or off. You'll see here that checkerboard dithering pattern comes up on the screen and you can walk around and see what it looks like. I kind of like it off in some spots, but there are some ugly artifacts of it. It's nothing to do with the implementation of this. It's just how it works. And you can put texture filtering on or off. It just gives it a little bit smoother of a look that way you can see what you like but the best thing is the widescreen support 
playing widescreen on PlayStation 1 and seeing all that extra content looks spectacular. You'll see there we have that rainbow banding on the fence, so I actually like dithering in Silent Hill on. But I do want to give a big thanks to a dude named Fuzz from the Discord. He's been helping me through this entire PlayStation 1 process, kind of telling me different things that were happening and keeping me informed. So Fuzz, I'm sure you're listening. I owe you a big thanks on this. And damn, does Silent Hill look great in 16 by 9 Doesn't help the controls any, they're still tank controls. But not only does this game look great, it sounds spectacular. So go ahead and listen and I will be right back. this? What's going on here? What's going on is your mister is now a PlayStation 1, but it's even better in some ways. And if you drop down to video and audio here, there's some options that you can play around with. You can do this just to full screen. Don't do it, but it is an option. Use that 16 by 9 toggle. We can change the different scaling modes, and you'll see here we're going to get a narrower integer scale or a wider one. I just leave this as normal, and I think you should too, but it is totally up to you. And like I said, you can turn that dithering on or off. And then the widescreen hack. What you need to realize about this is not it's, every game is going to function with it. If we turn on 16 by 9 in Crash Bandicoot 3, you're going to see that as we start running around this circle here, a lot of polygons are going to start disappearing at the edge. That is culling. It's just not rendering them to save on system resources, and it's pretty noticeable in 16 by 9. But if we go back down and do something like 3, 2, widening the screen but not as dramatically, that culling goes to a very big minimum, and that is how I think you want to play the game. Now, do be aware, 2D games do not allow for the widescreen hack. It is just going to stretch everything. Look at that door right below Abe there, that oval sign. As we stretch the image, it gets wider. It is distorting the aspect ratio. So when you're playing 2D games, things that aren't based on polygons, this is just something you're not going to be able to use. So go ahead and leave that off because I'm sure people will say it doesn't look right, right on 2D games. Now don't forget too, I did a video last week and I will leave a link in the description below because you can use the Gun Con 2, 1, or 3 on Mr. as well. And that is absolutely spectacular because there's so many great light gun games on the PlayStation 1 and this course supports them all. It supports so many different controllers, the Gun Con, the Justifier, basically everything including wheels and even Namco's weird like analog controller, the Negacon is how I believe it's pronounced. But this is a great little extra feature, and it is so good to have in there. Especially because most people don't collect CRTs anymore. But if you do need any further information, you can go over to the GitHub repository for the PlayStation Core, because it will give you a little bit more information. I can't answer every single question here. 99% of it is covered in this video, and using Update All, you're going to get all the files you need. But if you want to play something like multiple disc games, just pop over to the GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below, and you'll find all that info and if you do find a glitch go ahead and pop over to the issues tab and see if there's been a ticket reported for it now remember the person that makes this core if you issue a ticket wait for them to respond there is ticket etiquette on github be polite and provide as much information as possible something like this ticket right here gives a good amount of info so that the maker of the core can understand what's happening but short of that, this is spectacular. PlayStation 1 on Mr. is here. It is publicly released and it is functioning so well. Most of the issues in this core have been completely ironed out. And in all of my captures getting this final video ready, I did not have one crash or one graphical hitch whatsoever. Every single game you're going to want to play for the most part is going to be working perfectly fine. And it is going to be exactly how you remember it as you grew up. And that is the most fun about this. You can play whatever PlayStation game you want so long as you own it. Wink, wink, nod, nod. And you can play it via HDMI, which is spectacular as well. But of course, the 
Core does have full analog support too, so if you want to hook this up to a CRT television, by all means go ahead. It looks exactly how you think it would look, which is to say pristine because it's on that CRT. Because a lot of these games actually work better on a CRT as far as the visuals are concerned. PlayStation 1 is still one of those consoles that's going to look better than other consoles when you put it on a CRT television. But the question is, do you need to own a mister and play the PlayStation 1 core? Well, you could use original hardware, but I will say the original hardware is one of the most flaky platforms I have ever collected for. I've gone through so many different lasers on my PlayStation 1, it is always breaking. And if you do want to do something like put an X station in there so you can just load games versus trying to repair things like I'm doing here, it's going to be like a hundred bucks. And then if you want to talk about video quality, the PSX DVR, which has some of the best quality out, it's still not going to rival the HDMI off mister, or if you want to mod your system, a hundred. So it's $260 just for the mods, or you can just buy Mister, play the PlayStation 1 Core, and you've got that HDMI and that optical disc emulator, i.e. the FPGA, built right in. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I hope this guy gets you started on the road to PlayStation 1. I'll have another Mister video next week, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But yeah, Mister on PlayStation 1 is here, and it is awesome. Bye-bye.